Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Elden Ring. I'm just turning things back to days so we can better appreciate all of the details of Langdell and see the sun slash the earth tree <laughs> gleaming off of uh, the golden spires. Uh, so just up ahead, we have a party. And down here, we can get a better view of some of what's to come in the next chunk of the dungeon, including Crucible Knight, and if we take out the binocular, there's a peculiar little statue over here of Radagon doing his signature T-pose uh, with his cross-hatching pattern behind him. Remember, Muriel did tell us something about a statue of Radagon in the capital. He said that Radagon harbored a secret and that a famed sculptor uh, who, was, who was commissioned to render his likeness for posterity found out about that secret and that is baked into the statue somehow. We'll just ginger. Oh no, we won't. I made a mistake. I thought this was gonna be one of those situations where everybody only becomes hostile once you grab the item, kind of like a ceaseless discharge situation. All right, so we could go up the tree roots here. That would lead us to progress. That would lead us forward in the dungeon. Uh, we're gonna run past them for now. Also, escape the big gargoyle. Up the stairs onto these kind of autumnal grassy plains. This side, well, we can kind of see some of the tree guardians waiting to jump us once we start climbing the giant tree root. And then this enemy, I'm not sure if we've encountered this one before. Uh, I know that there have been opportunities to see a duelist, especially as a a mini dungeon boss. Wow, he really just can't handle the giant hunt. Because look at how much distance that covers, too. I can wind it up from so far away. And then by the time I enter his range, the active frames on it are already going. Oh, that's terrific. There we are. I was looking for them. Whatever is the matter, please, I implore you, continue. Continue your reflections, your rhythms. I must be the one to record them. What matters this issue of Radigan, really? The Erd Tree, heart of the Golden Order, lies before our very eyes. Why must these qualms come to you now? We were on the very cusp. Oh, was that you? Sorry. I hardly noticed. I'm a little shaken since the master ceased his movements. The master's reflections had heightened as we neared the Erd tree. While still a precise calculus, the rhythms grew increasingly wild until he simply ceased. Now the master is facing quite the puzzle. The Golden Order is founded on the principle that Marika is the one true god. However, the name of Marika's second husband, King Consort Radigan, also appeared. Who exactly was Radigan? The Master is stumped. His finger has remained still ever since Radigan's name was discovered. Curse my mediocre mind. The Master only has me. And here I fail him. Who exactly the master is stopped. His finger has... But the urge... Why we were on the ferry? Radagon again. So Marika is said to be the one true god. And Radagon, as far as we know, is was her king consort, the second Elden Lord after Godfrey.
And somehow, his name coming up is throwing a wrench into whatever cogitations Gold Mask is having. Oh, and once again, we see our destination way off in the distance. That's where we're heading. Not quite at this moment, though. Still just taking a look around. And stewing on... I don't want to call it a revelation yet. These hints. Iframes are gonna save the day here. Aw, oh, this poor duelist. Nope. Oh, this is a problem, though. He did get ahead of me. That happens to me so much when I speedrun Bloodborne. When you skip the, the very first werewolf in the very beginning, uh, using the iframes on the door, sometimes the werewolf will just phase through you and ahead of you and get you stuck inside. <laughs> And all this is a little PvP arena. Oh, I'm glad we uh, finished him off. We got Gravekeeper's Cloak Drop. I really like that. It is entirely shirtless, but still. It's a nice looking cloak. Right, now we're going to head back to that bonfire we started the episode on. There's the gargoyle that attacked me as soon as I got near the sapling in the golden seed. RIP the page. And now we're going to jump down. And once more, we come to another part of the capital that's kind of just ravaged. Ravaged and abandoned. Even a lot of stray dogs running around, and these ones are not friendly like the one last time. They're hungry, and they want me. And then if we do a little platforming and come up here, and then jump over this destroyed part of the wall, we can come inside this building, which ought to look familiar. Hello! Ooh. <laughs> Thought I heard that. Well, of course you're going to be the one that puts up a fight. Oh, I saw a ghost with the jellyfish seal shield. Does my heart good. I love that thing. Well, well, well. There is a Sanctified Webblade, new webblade for us, or new infusions, and a hammer where Hugh would have been, or is. Hammer comprised of a large stone affixed to, okay. The art of smithing is said to have originated among the giants. And in Fia's room, by my sword, Another gesture, and a hero's rune. This is something that From really likes doing. Your hub world is often in some kind of pocket outside of space and time. But some variation of it exists, usually abandoned, somewhere in the world. Uh, there was the the graveyard in Dark Souls 3 and the abandoned Firelink Shrine. Uh, the abandoned workshop in Bloodborne. And then this would be the room with Enya and the two fingers. Completely empty. Save for a big throne and a portrait of the Erd Tree hanging over it. Hidden sword once granted to the tarnished of the round table hold by the two fingers. A formless cipher comprises its blade, which deals holy damage and no shield can repel. 
Champions would gather at the round table hold in days long past when the two fingers were masters of oration, their flesh yet full of vigor. The two fingers, masters of oration. But we see with Gold Mask that oration doesn't actually have to be audible oratory. So maybe their oration was like Gold Mask's gesture based and they were simply more articulate more vibrant <laughs> yep that's a ladder <laughs> excellent excellent message and then we have the dung eaters room suitably cold feeling and this pox defiled corpse and then another guy with a seabed curse and a bloody cloth over his groin That's our dung eater for ya. We've met some real scumbags. We met Vare, uh, Ensha, Gideon. But none of them really. Saluvis. None of them quite measure up to the dung eater, huh? And then we actually have something important to do down here once we clear out some of the side rooms. A lot of which is not open to us in normal round table hold or our round table hold, the one familiar to us. Lightless bird painting. We'll eventually remember to do that someday. Paintings have to be my most forgotten thing. Uh, now, as we come out to the bottom floor, we can throw open these double doors. And I think this leads to, yeah, this leads to, I want to say an elevator? Yeah, okay, it's this hallway. And then I also think there are some Iron Maidens. Yes, 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 yes. So we'll do our best to avoid those. Ah, oh, there's two, right? Yes. Uh, so first, there's something small that I'll just grab really quick at the end of this hall. It's like a rune or something? Somber Smithing Stone 6. Sure, why not? And then hopefully there- oh. Well, that's good enough. Oh, I hate that you slow down a little bit to pick items up, but now we're good. I don't think they can get onto the elevator. It may cause their AI to melt down if they did. So this leads to a very remote location. A place that's going to be useful to us later on down the road. Uh, but it's worth coming up here and unlocking this now because we can always just teleport back here. There is a nice, convenient sight of grace up here. And also, one of these damn golems. So while we're up here, we can just do ourselves a favor for later and get this cleared out ahead of time. And take some big swings as ankle, drop him, and then we get the critical strike in his chest. That should be a majority of the health. This shouldn't be too much of a uh, too much of a problem. Although I can't. Uh, depends whether or not I can drop him again. Yeah, there we are. Wanted to do the Zamboni attack. Sometimes he he carries that on for a while. Okay, 
Like, nothing special from him. A couple runes. Just a headache we don't have to deal with later. Blessed Dew Talisman. I believe this is the HP regeneration one. Depicting a drop of the Erdtree Sap. Blessed Boon gradually restores HP. It was once thought that the Blessed Sap of the Erdtree would drop from its bows forever. But that age of plenty swiftly came to a close. And with time, the Erdtree became more an object of faith. Talisman patterned after shields used in ritual combat held to honor the Erdtree. The practice had died out by the age of King Consort Radagon, but remains of the arena where, where ritual combat took place can still be found in every land. Raises defense when HP is at max. And the reason that we come up here is not necessarily just for that. It's because there is a way gate. All the way up here. And this way gate brings us to... Where the hell is this? It's the abyss. <laughs> uh, this is way far away from the earth tree. Yeah. This is the isolated divine tower. And it's tightly blocked shut. So we can't do shit with that right now. But we have that handy sight of grace. Now we're going to warp back to the round table hold. Or not the round table hold, but the abandoned version that exists in Landell. Because we still have a few things to do here. It's quite a dense, compact area. Alberic, yeah, he is the one who invaded us when we came down here in our version of the Roundtable Hold. The Pocket Dimension Roundtable Hold. And I really like that gear. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna have to stow some of this stuff. I'm starting to have way too much. I know I've gone past it. There, there, there. Mad Tongue Alberic's robe. Set with red glintstones, said to be formed by the blood of sacrifices, strengthens thorn sorcery. Alberic was an aloof yet disturbed heretical sorcerer, said to have been driven mad by searing by jeering tongues during his service to the Round Table Hold. And this is also associated with Mad Tongue Alberic. This gets you more invasions in multiplayer. Speaking of invasions, we'll have one to do right dead center of the room, uh, just as soon as we clear out just a few more side rooms. This place really honeycombs. Some black key bolts, and the Two Fingers Prayer Book. New key item for some new spells. So many key items. <laughs> There it is. Oh, right at the end. Prayer book containing the incantations of the two fingers. An item once entrusted to tarnished worthy of lordship. Oh, so this place isn't completely abandoned. There are a handful of holdouts. Just having a feast in here. Roundtable Hold has squatters. God bless. No one else is using this huge castle. Alright, now... Now we can finally get to this. This invasion of Fargrim and Wilhelm is for uh, Volcano Manor. And this one is a little bit different from the other one that we did. Because this is a 2v2. Because we're invading two people, we get a partner, and it is Rakuz Infernal, who is using, oh, 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 look at that go, a very powerful weapon. In fact, 
the weapon that he's using is the boss weapon that you get from Rikard of Volcano Banner. Oh, he's using some of the night sorceries. They're really good uh, against AI opponents specifically because the AI does not try to avoid uh, uh, night sorceries or night incantations, whatever they're classed as. So it's way easier to hit uh, in PvE with them. And another set that I think is quite nice looking. They really hold out on you until like the middle of the game to start giving you armor sets and then they just shower you with them. Armor worn by Vargrim the Raging... Yeah, Vargrim the Raging Wolf. One of the first tarnished to visit the Round Table Hold. According to old legends, wolves are the shadows of the Empyrean. And this is what Vargrim aspired to be. Wolves are the shadows of the Empyrean. Kind of like Blythe and Ronnie? The wolf and the Empyrean. So, who is. Oh my! Oh my, oh my, oh my. Who is Marika's shadow? Oh, it's just right through my skull. They fully Phineas gauged me. Oh my god, how long is it going to last? I should pay more attention before I get another one. Yeah, that attack is a little worrisome, in addition to being sniped. You know, we did have the, all those red wolves of Radagon. Which is interesting when you think about it in those terms. With the shadow and the Empyrean! Oh! But then, Mikola and Melania are also Empyreans, right? What about that? Oh no! Wow, he had the tech ready for the giant hunt. Okay. Didn't have the tech ready for that. Meanwhile, Grand Sacks were just fighting around his grippers. He just has them out for free. You can even climb up on him for some platforming. <laughs> uh, nothing to be gained from that one. But the other foot, if we get up on it, uh, we should be able to make it up onto a rooftop or two. Yep, there are a couple of jumps. Like right up here. Not sure if this gets us anything. <laughs> oh, hi. Almost didn't see this, which is nothing, but okay. But yeah, you can see the item glow up on the second floor of that, that shed stall. Oh, and then you have to go right off of the toenail onto this roof, and then make another long jump here, I believe. Let's turn the light on so it's easier to see. Ah, oh. ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Yay! Second time, and our reward: stone sword key. Oh, hey, also smith and stone. And now we don't have to spend the rest of our lives wondering what could have been if we had just skipped that item. Which is a much more potent reward than if that had actually been something, isn't it? No. But still. Okay, let's finally get up on this giant root and start climbing it all the way to the top. 
I think we have pretty well cleared out the bottom part of Langdell. Only forward from here. Oh yeah, and we can get right back to the bonfire. You can see how everything branches off. <laughs> Please clap. Please laugh uproariously. <laughs> So instead of taking the path around to the right, which winds upwards, we can actually follow this one down to the left. And was there a point? Uh, oh yeah, I see. Okay. Because now this lets us, lets us go down to this lower ledge of the cliff we were on earlier. Where there are a bunch of Miranda flowers. And also, a small item that we saw from across the gap earlier. Very small, but appreciated. This is how the desire sensor works. You don't scoff at what you're given, and then sometimes you're given... Uh, a drop of a rare item on the very first enemy that could potentially drop off of. Must appreciate what you have. Gratitude in all things. Sometimes you get five old fangs, and you just have to say, fangs a lot. <laughs> I deserve to slip off of the tree for that. For that. Oh my, you might make it happen. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Thankfully, he didn't try to push me. Not like the Cathedral of the Deep Knight. Oh, no. That one had the killer instinct running in his blood. Running in his code. Yeah, we're not gonna... That's five of them in a row? We're not gonna try to fight all of them on top of this chunky branch. No way. We're gonna get to wi oh with weef weef weef. We're gonna get to more solid footing. And then just kind of pick them all off. Like their shoulder checks. Okay. Oh, there's still one more. Yeah. All right. We're good. We're good. We're good to come over here and drop off onto the awning. Oh, this isn't the secret I think it is. Uh, I think that's after the boss, is what I'm thinking of. This is just some holy grease. Three of them, in fact. But again, we take those. One day that'll be useful. I'll coat my weapon in holy grease one day. You can count on it. They give this to you right outside of the boss arena, which would seem to indicate that he's weak to holy. But I don't think that's the case, because look at him. Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, or at least some kind of golden projection of him. As you can see, he delays just about everything. And he really likes to hit all the way around himself. And stomp. Oops. Forgot that follow-up. So for reasons that will probably make sense way further in the future, I don't like this fight very much. I think it's kind of... I don't know. I think it's kind of creatively bankrupt. I can't really go too much into detail about why, but like, I think it's kind of just a filler fight. 
I don't think it's necessary for this to be here. Even though I like fighting Godfrey, I think the moveset and everything about it is fine, even though here it's kind of limited. It just, I don't know, it just feels random and unnecessary. But since I can't talk too much about the reasons I feel that way right now, and it's kind of like a, a retrospect thing that I felt like that after my first playthrough, uh, I'll, I will instead just say, I'm slightly getting my ass whooped. Uh-oh, yeah, that's it. Oh, right at the end, too. I'll take a little bit of good luck too. I've been I've been biting on too many feints. The main thing that I fixed in this attempt. Boom! Ah, oh, that was a little anticlimactic. We do get a talisman pouch out of it out of it though. So, fill or fight or not, we get four talismans now. Which last one do I want to put on? Always tempted to put the jumping attack one on, but hmm. Let's that be consumed by skills. Let's go with that for now. All right, I figured out what I want to do next. Next, we're going after that item all the way up there. To do that, we have to come back out here to the terrace and we have to keep going up a little bit. Actually, this is the way that unlocked after we beat Godfrey. This is the opposite end of the terrace we entered from. So this branch that uh, that chair with the item is on, this blocks our way. So instead, we come out here, we hang a left, and then we drop down onto the roof. And there's an open window we can get through. That takes us to the opposite side of the balcony that's blocked off from us. From here, we still can't quite get to the item, but we have access to this whole other side. There's a chest here. There's a shortcut we can open up uh, just through here, I think. Yes, and probably a... Oh, Celestial Dew. I was going to say Stone Sword Gate. Now the ladder connects the top and bottom floor, and we can get up on the route which is just close enough to get this Golden Order Codex. A dense and complex academic treatise that contains the Order's fundamental principles. Okay, so let's go find a learned cleric and give that to them. And we just so happen to know a learned cleric who also happens to know a lot about Radagon. It's Muriel, Muriel over at the Church of Outs. And we're going to pick one of those incantations up at the very least right now. Oh, also new dialogue, since we used the do a while ago to get Ronnie to forgive us. I see you have undergone absolution. The miracle that blossoms from these grounds. Good. As such, the bond you may have strained or severed has been restored to its rightful state of harmony. Be mindful not to take for granted the serenity restored by this miracle and take care never to break a bond again oh what have we here very well let us heresy is all thing very well heresy oh, all well. things heresy all thing incantation of the golden order fundamentalists one of the key fundamentals Fundamentalists describe the Golden Order through the powers of regression and causality. Regression is the pull of meaning that all things yearn eternally to converge. Dispel special effects. So the law of regression and the law of causality. Now, with that in hand, let's return to the Erdtree Sanctuary where we just teleported from. Uh, Golden Godfrey's Boss Arena. Boss Room. Next up, we are going to equip Law of Causality. 
the thing about that spell is that it requires 29 int to cast, and this is not an int build. So in lieu of going back to Renala and respecking, I'm instead uh, going to equip a few items like the Twin Sage Glintstone Crown, the Stargazer, Stargazer Heirloom we got recently uh, from the inverted study hall of the Divine Tower of Lyernia, and the Intelligence Not Crystal Tear. Uh, the Stargazer Heirloom is plus five, the Twin Sage Helmet is plus six, and the Intelligence Not Tear is plus ten. So we have plus 21 in total, which is more than enough to be able to cast this spell. As for why I want to be able to cast this spell, we're going to go get an answer to that right now. I think it's just out this way, down the stairs, and down the elevator here. This is another chunk of Landell that's opened up post-golden projection of Godfrey. We can finally come face to face with the Radagon statue. So now I'm gonna pop my Physic tier. Gonna throw my helmet on. I have my uh, Beast Claw Talisman, and let's step forward and see this message. Regression alone reveals secrets. I don't believe it. Radagon is Marika. Order. The secret of the statue is that when you use Law of Regression, it regresses into a statue of America. That's Radagon's secret that the sculptor uncovered. Radagon and America are one in the same. The ultimate in dual natures. One more for the pile in it. Where are you running off to? Oh, you're just trying to get distance. I thought I was gonna low profile the low profile the fire. But yeah, one more. One more. And this is the biggest one yet. Oh, invisible teardrop scarab. Uh, we'll get that. First, there's a few things to do here. Uh, one of these I can jump up on, fall off here, perfect. And then I fall off here to get onto the bolt impaling this huge dragon. And it's a little bit tricky to climb, a little bit of a pain, but we can get up onto it, avoid all these snipers. Ugh. I put myself in a stressful spot in the middle of all these Landell knights and the archers. I will try to get back to processing the whole statue. Ooh, revelation after this. This is just very, very, very dicey right now. <laughs> I'm shipping away, but now I'm stuck in the... Okay. Good. Ooh. I'm glad that knight back there didn't join in yet. Once they pull their bows out and start sniping at you, it's over. It's so deadly. Oh my. Uh, I've run out of mana. So, oh, I still have a giant ton or two left in me. Maybe one. Nope, nope, nope. You're not allowed. I'm not letting you do that, please. I need rejection. This one's fighting like he means it. Okay. Oh. 
Knight's Greatsword. Okay, worthwhile. Varnish Golden Sunflower. Okay. So what does this really... Oh, another. Tell us with, with Merica and Radagon. If they're opposite or contradicting ends of, of a dialectic, we could probably infer some things about both of them. But we don't know for sure that's the case. It's just... The Souls games often really like to feature a lot of, like, alchemical imagery, and Radagon and Merica themselves being the same person, perhaps, makes them something like a Rebus or an attempted one. Oops, oops, oops. Careful, careful. Do not get captured. Don't get captured. Perfect. Uh, Rebus is the, the alchemical union of opposites. Masculine and feminine. Specifically, to create one perfect being. Uh, and I'm afraid I really can't comment much more on that connection because I don't have a whole lot of in-depth knowledge about alchemy. Though I occasionally do get some cool comments about it. Especially in the From stuff, because again, they do love going to the alchemical well. I apparently have a few fans who are into the esoteric, which is neat. Okay, now that we're actually, like, clear and not being given constant heart attacks, spear whittled from the weapon wielded by Gransax, one of the legendary armaments. A great ancient dragon, Gransax once... once rained calamity upon the royal capital, the only time in historical record that Landell's walls have fallen. This marked the dawn of the war against the ancient dragons. So, I was incorrect uh, the several times that I said that that bolt is impaling Grand Sax. That's Grand Sax's weapon. Which is now fun-sized and miniaturized for us. It's now our weapon. Oh, and with all this cleared out, it's so peaceful and quiet here now. We're going to have to go back up and deal with the... Oh, there's still some more. The Crucible Knight and uh, that Invisible Scarab eventually. Nope. I didn't go through all that to get washed by these two. Very kind of them to drop their equipment, though. Scratch a few things off the list. I think they're bound to be a knight or two behind them. I'll just let them come to me. Now we continue to fork around in all sorts of directions. Because we haven't done that enough yet in this dungeon. We still have branches within branches. Oop. I didn't need that second roll back. That was a little bit too much. Uh oh. Forever throwing pots at me. Ah! Wow, they hit like tanks. No, you can't beat me with my own move. He was charging that R2 up. Let's go back to Big Crushy for a little while. I just like the variety, so I switch around a lot. Okay, cool, and we're back out here.
finally back here. Is that the scarab I hear above me or is there another one? I think I'm hearing the twinkling sound of it above me. We should be right below where the invisible one's patrolling and the crucible knight is. What am I hearing aside from the gargoyle? Is it just the gargoyle? Yeah, okay. I thought I was hearing something else. And then once you get to their side or behind them, they are totally helpless. We encounter the same thing now that I think about it back in Deep Root Depths, so these this is not new to us. Before we move forward in Lanedell and get ready to fight the actual final boss of the dungeon and finish this place off. Actually, that's not really true because we still have the subzones for uh, some time in the near future. But the main dungeon, before we do that, we have a couple more things to... Oh, perfect! I got clipped a little bit, but so did he. It didn't matter more to him. Kill him before the perfumer, please. Okay. So got a few things to take care of. One of them is down. The other one is patrolling invisibly. So we just have to wait for it and time it correctly. Ah, nope. You are, nope. Juke me. Did it again. There you are. Barrier of gold. We're pretty well cleared out. Let's head back to the boss room one more time. Then we'll go out on the terrace and move forward. One more time, we'll follow this route around, come out here instead of taking the left and dropping onto the roof to get the, the book again. We follow the trail of dead finger readers into the queen's bedchamber. Also, please do keep note of this black knife assassin up here on the right. Don't just run past her on the way to the bonfire. You will get backstabbed. Though, a black knife assassin waiting right outside the queen's bedchamber. Now we receive the blessing of the Erd Tree. Let's see what's up with that. One of the ancient Urtree incantations. The Urtree once flourished with, the, with abundance, yet it was only for a fleeting moment, such as the course of all life. Oh, you know what? I want to fix my physic flask. I still have the intelligence tier in there. Uh, let's get that done. Open bubble tier and my hard tier. And then also, I should also have the Stargazer still equipped too. So let's get that off. I'm feeling right as rain now. Now, just up the stairs and through the door is the way to the Erd Tree. But a very challenging boss stands in the way. The King of Langdell. 
and we will start with him next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, everyone. And one last thing, the final shout out of the year to my $10 and up patrons over at patreon.com slash scribe. An extra special thanks to Mort of Venom, Derek and Sierra, Alexis Annabelle Adler, Benjamin Carlson, Spectre Haven, Wi-Fi, Glenn Mullen, Moody, Not a Tick with Wi-Fi, Cracky, Wolfman 500, Brenton Buchanan, Absinthe Miasma, Evan, Kyle, Cinderland Ockerblom, and Victor T. Thank you all so, so much, and Happy New Year, everyone.